Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Thank you so much for staying with us at this late hour. It's about 8.18. Uh, it's time to get into a message from our sponsor uh, as well as our missing child. Before I do that, I just want to get a couple of comments in from the Mix LR page. First, author of Desiree Monique just called us a few minutes ago. She's digging the music. Yeah, it's my birthday, which means on my birthday, I'm going to play my favorite artist in the world. Uh, which is Bob Marley. I got the Bob Marley shirt on and the Bob Marley hat on. Uh, I got gifted by the Dana Pool Diva. We got a Bob Marley picture up in the room. So I'm feeling real, I'm feeling real, you know, spiritual tonight. So I'm appreciating the love. Uh, I'm getting a hit from Winston TS. Kudos to Michael Douglas for getting the conversation started. Uh, that one can contract side effects from STDs orally too. Uh, she continues her comment by saying, Mama said not to put everything in your mouth, <laughs> uh, which I agree with. I think it's funny as hell, and so does that's why Butler. She's agreeing with well, Ain't that the truth? You know, I step on Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio.com and uh, Mix LR. We on Shoutcast, we on Winamp, we on Loud City. There's a multitude of ways that you can get our show. We appreciate the love that we're getting from the people who are uh, listening to us. I want to give you some information about our sponsor. We got the Doctor of Optometry, Dr. Euphemia Huggins-Williams, ODPC, uh, who sponsors our show. She's my eye doctor, y'all. She takes care of my eyes. She makes sure that I can see and I ain't blind. If you ever seen me, you almost never see me without glasses and I always get them from her. Uh, you always, uh, she's got a nice selection of eyewear and uh, she takes care of the cataracts, astigmatisms, glaucoma, all of that kind of stuff. If you got any issues, she can make sure that she helps to resolve all of those. And like I said, she takes all kinds of insurances. Uh, she takes, uh, you know, she has a great selection of eyewear. So holler at her at 804-327-1640. Uh, or contact her uh, by dropping in at 7124 Forest Hill Avenue, Suite B, here in Richmond, Virginia, 23225. Check her out. Uh, ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. I also have a missing and exploited child that we will get to in a minute. But before I do that, we've got a call. Uh, caller on the live line. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your deal? Hey, Marcus, it's Sharon. Happy birthday, Big Sexy. Well, oh my goodness. What's going on, girl? That's S.Y. Butler, y'all. We appreciate your call. Th well, I appreciate your call. Thank you very much. I appreciate Big Sexy. Wow. Okay. I I'm half that. <laughs> <laughs> you were the only one that picked up on that. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm half that. It's your birthday. You all that. You got it, girl. I appreciate the love. Thank you so much. You got anything? Uh, I know you're listening. I know you've been listening, and I see your notes. Uh, on the Mix LR page. You want to get in on anything that we've been talking about so far? You want to get in on the fact that I compare myself to Jesus? Man, I don't know what the heck is going on. I just hope that Jesus goes and take that dude some ribs because he's going to need some food for a while. <laughs> I don't know. What did you just mix up two stories that we did? I sure did. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. How you how you feeling the music tonight? I've been playing Bob Marley all night. You okay with that? No, I'm good. I like it. I like it. Yep. I can dig it. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, right? You got mm -hmm. any thoughts on Michael Douglas contracting throat cancer from Cunnilingus? Okay, that's real nasty. Because I put a little post there because that, that's nasty. I looked it up while you were talking about it, and it said it had, you You have like warts. Mm. So he can't, he can't see that. I wonder what she's doing down here if those things are right there. That's nasty. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Shannon, we appreciate the love that you're giving us. Thank you so much for calling. We're going to let you go, uh, but keep on listening, all right? You're welcome. Have a good birthday. You got it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Keeping it moving. At this point, I want to go ahead and profile our missing and or exploited child as we do every single week. We've got Kenya Coleman. Uh, she is an endangered runaway. She's 16 years old. She's been missing uh, since May 23rd, 2013. She is a black female and she is missing from Chesterfield County, Virginia, which is right here in the Richmond, Virginia area. Uh, she is, uh, once again, a black female who stands 5'11", 120 pounds. She's 5'11", with hazel eyes, black 
uh, hair and black eyes. If you have seen, uh, if you have seen Kenya, please contact the National Center for Missing or Exploited Children at their website, missingkids.com, uh, or call them up at one eight hundred the Lost, one eight hundred eight four three five six seven eight. It's important that we bring Kenya Coleman home to her family, endangered runaway, and don't be put off by the phrase runaway. Because we know that them people and uh, those people in, in, in Cleveland were, were runaways. And just because they are runaway doesn't mean that we definitely uh, don't need to keep our eye out for them. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J. We got another call on the line. Caller, Caller what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, don't have step with Marcus J. Yeah, I think I think that's my baby sister Ned on the line with my niece hey. on the phone. Yep, my niece yep. is telling me what's going on, girl. Not a thing. Happy Earth Strong, big bro. I appreciate it. Happy uh, Happy Earth Strong to me. Thirty nine years old. I feel pretty damn yep. good tonight. Thank you so much for calling. If you uh, you know, we've been talking about a whole lot of stuff tonight, man. We've yep, been talking. We're listening. Yeah. Did, so you got any comments on anything we've been getting in on tonight? Uh, well, the Michael Douglas thing is pretty deep. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It but is deep if it too. Is true, much respect <laughs> to him for putting it out there. So I mean, that people would think twice. Maybe you got to be careful. Yeah, I guess you are. But if you into that, then you just gonna have to take that chance. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Again, like you said before, my mother's listening. So. Hey, look, man. Hey, ain't no has to have one. This is my show. I'm a grown ass man. I, okay, she well, listening. Wait a minute, you're listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. I, I know she's listening, but I got to keep it real. My look, sorry, no, no, bro. No, no, I think you're listening. So oh yeah, <laughs> she got a granddaughter somehow, you're right? Yeah, me. she got a couple of grandkids. All right, then. They didn't get here like Jesus got here. <laughs> really I know that's right. There you go. There you go. Right. Well, let me let me let me ask All you. Right. Let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you real quick, Nat. Were you listening when we talked about the Australian fella who says that he's Jesus reincarnated? Oh no, I didn't check. I didn't uh, hear you that. got an Australian guy who says that he's Jesus Christ reincarnated. Uh, he says that he uh, remembers the re, uh, the the crucifixion. The crucifixion. Uh, he's fifty. He's fifty years old, and he realized that he was Jesus reincarnated in nineteen ninety seven when he got divorced. In the world, yeah, yeah, we having a good call. Um, I missed that story, but that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Ain't no hashtag. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't really have a comment for that one. It's probably a good idea that you don't. So I appreciate it. <laughs> That's my little sister, y'all. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. I'm live from Bye the damn Legacy Internet Radio. Love you, girl. Give my niece Love a kiss too. for me. Will do. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. We live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio dot com. We getting some love here. It's my birthday show, y'all. I'm 39 years old. I'm putting it out there. I feel good. Uh, I still look young. And hate me if you want to. Love me if you choose to. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Dating Pool Diva. It's time to move on and talk about the Diva Diaries. Uh, you know, I always like to play a little bit of Diva Diaries music for you. Uh, so you 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 actually can't hear it, but it's out there, and the listeners, uh, it very quickly, they'll, they'll be actually able to hear uh, your theme song is actually playing right now in the background. You got the Diva Diaries going on. What you got, girl? All right. Um, how's everybody doing, first of all? Fabulous. Good. Great. Good. Thank you. Okay, Fabulous. I have We're a little really, bit nervous because you be bringing it. So I'm bringing it tonight because <laughs> this one right here, this is a blog question that was posted on the Dating Pool blog, which is on Facebook. You guys can join that group, and um, all you have to do is request to join, and, and you straight. You know what I'm saying? All right. Steven Sykes, which is uh, one of our faithful dating pool blog um, bloggers. Uh, he comes to the forums. He's always involved. Not only that, Steven actually does a show here on Legacy he Internet Radio. Uh, his show in Live in the Radio airs every Tuesday night from 7 to 9 uh, Mr. LP, he goes by on air with his co-host, Mr. Sincere, 7 to 9, right here on these same airwaves. His question to the group he posted, I believe, yesterday was, everyone feel free to respond. A question of a friend messaged me a situation that she wanted various points of view from. She's very upset about it. Her future husband's ex-wife needs a car. 
Their son from the previous relationship is only five years old. They were married for seven years, divorced for three years now. He takes care of his son, good relationship with the ex-wife, but has a view similar to mine that the mother of his child shouldn't walk for the child's sake. The current fiance understood that view when the child was smaller. Now that the child is five, she feels that he doesn't need to make sure the mother is okay anymore, only the child. The ex-wife doesn't ask for anything, no custody issues, all is okay. Here's on, he's only looking to buy a cheap car like $1,500 for her, all that she asks for help on. She even offered to pay him back, but she feels he's wrong. Thoughts? Okay, so I'm going to put this to you, Carlton Banks. Do you follow the question? It has a lot going on there. Yeah, I, I hear I hear the, the squirrel bear letter going on, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said squirrel bear. Um, my question is this, why can't he try to help her out? She is his baby mama, right? That title didn't change once he got married. Um, now, granted, he's got to respect the household, and as long as his finances doesn't impact that, then by all means, support your baby mama. She, maybe she's doing something right for the child in that regards. If she doesn't have a car, how can, you know, if, he, if she has custody, then how does she get him to the hospital? How does she get him to a doctor's appointment? How does she get him to baseball, football, soccer, whatever? You know, if she's offering to pay him back, then hey, that's even better. That's, you know, something I can write off. Tony, what do you think? Absolutely. I mean, your child always comes first, regardless of the status of your relationship. And transportation is vital, you know, especially where we live. Um, you know, you have to make sure that you can get to and from, you know, doctor's appointments for the child or what have you. So, um, you know, if they seem to have a pretty amicable, amicable relationship, you know, she just needs help with getting a car and he's able to do that. Um, then I don't see why it's a problem. I mean, when, when I when I saw this post online, you know, my first thought was, where's there a problem here? You know, the way the question was presented, you've got a reasonable, you know, child's mother. I don't particularly care for the baby mama phrase, but you had a reasonable woman who's the, the, the child's mother. She's got the five-year-old child that they share together. He's got a new lady, and that's cool. And she, the way it's presented, you know, yeah, I need a car. Uh, my car keeps breaking down. I think we got that piece after we asked questions and we got a little bit more clarity on the situation. Because this is a real situation, y'all. This ain't something that someone made up hypothetically. This is a real person. Um, and the, the 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 car keeps breaking down. She ain't looking to go out and get a brand new car. She looking to replace the Ford Tempo that she had. And if she can get a little something. And she also says that she'd be willing to, he to, to help pay him back. So if she's willing to help pay him back, what's the problem? I, I, I really don't see where the problem was. Now, uh, he's not here with us tonight, uh, but we're going to call him out anyway. Big Rube, uh, who I think we all know who Big Rube is here on Ain't No How Stabbing with Marcus J. You know, he, he took, you know, a little bit of exception to the fact that you know the brother is potentially going to help out you know the the baby mama and he was concerned and, and he, he took the devil's advocate and it wasn't necessarily the devil's advocate he actually felt this way you know he's like yo if she's a grown-ass woman why well, i gotta help her with a car why can't she get her own car what she need me for and to that call banks you say what why why not i mean again that's that whole thing of as long as it doesn't impact the main house, that second house is always going to be there regardless. I can't get rid of it. It's it's part of me. It's part of me holistically. You have to accept that when you came into this situation. There should have been a better communication between the two to begin with in order to establish that no matter what happens between you and me, that one's always going to be a, be there. I can't say it's a problem. I'm never going to say that. It's just always going to be there. Tony, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean... 
that that child comes first. I don't care what the status of relation, your relationship is. I do believe that there need to be boundaries. Like he shouldn't be taking groceries to her house every week and things like that. But again, to me, that's something minor. If he's able to, to at least help her to get on her feet with getting transportation so that she can, you know, do other things and be more independent um, financially and, and take care of the child, then I don't see anything wrong with that. But you can't, you have to know and realize going in that, you know, that man has a responsibility to that child, at least until they're 18. We got one comment on this blog. It's, you know, again, we had this blog on the Love Revolution, Dating Pool blog here that we have on Facebook wall that's run by uh, the Dating Pool Diva herself, Author Charisma, who's here with us in the building. One of the, uh, and, and we haven't gotten permission from these folks, so I won't call them out, but one person says, if the father has no problem paying, the mother is willing to pay back, then it's a move point plus the child. Uh, does not uh, the child being does not mean assistance from the father is not required if the father does not have the money I can understand but it, this resistance can only create conflict in a situation that appears to not have any I'm just saying uh, I somewhat agree with her uh, there's another person that says I wouldn't feel right asking my ex to buy me a car uh, I understand uh, they have a child together, but it takes the nerve to ask him to do that for her. It's also being a little disrespectful to the man's fiance. Uh, and then Big Rube actually says he needs more information, uh, but not sure why baby mama needs money for a car. Plus, he, he has the money when he doesn't pay consistent child support. He walked. Uh, she walked for five years. She can she can afford a car. Could be a trap uh, if he gives her the car. Uh, who takes care of it, fiance shouldn't be mad, but I see why she is cautious. I probably wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't buy the car. There was a lot of information that was missing for Big Rube to completely formulate his opinion, which we ended up getting some information, but I won't read all the comments, but he still disagrees and says that it's a bad idea. Later on, comments uh, included potentially buying a, uh, becoming a co-signer for her, uh, I jumped in at that point and said, hell no, nah, I ain't co-signing for no. nothing. Uh, you would be better suited to maybe have a person-to-person -person relationship because if she's already reasonable with regards to if she's already reasonable with regards to the child support, then you got to guess that she's going to be reasonable with regards to you giving her a loan for a car. If you get you know, a co-signer, then you bring in another party that could potentially become a problem down the line. If you help her with some money, you can deal with her directly. But if you co-sign, then that's going to be your ass on the line if she don't pay it that's going to be a problem tony well and i think too that you know so many people have that oh well, you know you got to have a lot of nerve to ask you know your the your child's father or mother to help you with that child that's who's supposed to help you with that child i shouldn't have to ask you know my family or friends for assistance if i need it we made this child together so you automatically are the first person that i'm going to come to for assistance with our child but oh. see uh, you also got to take in consideration that the fiance is trying to establish a meaningful relationship with this man as well. There's got to be a give and take in this situation. And in same response, he's got to be able to defend his wife and also defend the baby mama as well. There's two fights. He's got to fight. He's going to constantly have that fight. But it's not a fight. That's it your is child. A fight. It That's is your a fight. child. Nothing Tony. overshadows your relationship with your child. Nothing comes before your child. Nothing and nobody. Okay. Well, you know that's not how they how some people want to see it, and that's not what some people want to say. It's always going to be a fight, constantly. It's not true. Okay, I would agree more with what Tony is saying because I feel like. It sounds like to me the fiance is a little insecure and jealous. She knew that that baby mother was there in the first place, for one thing. For two, how can you say something like, oh, he's five years old, he should be straight now. I mean, as, as the child's father, you're responsible at least till 18 and sometimes even longer than that. Be so I just don't agree with that. I just feel like you knew that baby mother was there, you knew, you knew that you know, there are responsibilities that come with that, and you have to accept that if you want to marry him. That's just the bottom line. I mean, I, I actually tend to agree with that. You know, my thought is ultimately this woman is responsible for raising your child. Your child is not being raised in your household, but your child still needs to go to school, still needs to go to soccer practice, still needs to go to the doctor, still needs to go to the mall, still needs to go to sleepovers. How the hell he going to get there if she ain't got a car? You know what I mean? So are you responsible for buying her a car? No. But 
especially if this is someone and we know how the you know i don't again i don't like the baby mama phrase but we you know quote unquote air quotes here we know how the baby mama situation can sometimes be we know that it can sometimes be a contentious relationship by the way that this was set up this was not a contentious relationship this is a happy relationship we also got information about how the fiance and the child's mother have spent time around each other bringing cupcakes to school and stuff like that these are the things that came out as the information was asked for and has been given uh in that question on the date and blue blog so by that fact if you've got a reasonable child's mother who is telling you in the question can you help me get a car i'll pay you back and you know that she's reasonable based upon how you've been dealing with her with the child support i don't see the problem especially when she is going to be transporting your child your child around would you rather be the one having to pick her up and take her where your child need to be or would you rather be you know would you rather go ahead and put a little money out up front especially if you have it now if you ain't got it then that's a different conversation but if you got it i, I really don't see where the problem is here you know and the question was presented in a way to assume that there was a problem for someone because it well obviously in this case it's the fiance but the way it was set up it was, it's a problem for someone but when it was given to me Carlton, i just don't see where the problem is it's, it's always gonna be a problem you cannot have two hands in the same house i'm sorry and how are there two hands in the because same house? because one is going to always be wondering where he is and why he is where he yeah, is. Yeah, but that ain't got nothing to do with B. Here's it's, why. It's, here's, it, here's hey, why. hey, it's my opinion. I understand it's my opinion. your opinion, but, let's, but, but, but we're but also let's, having a discussion. Right, we're having and a discussion. Why, so. why does that happen? You know, two heads in the household. Here's where I don't think that applies. Because he can buy his child thousands of dollars worth of stuff, or he can buy his mother a car, or he can buy and do whatever. She ain't living with him. Right. That ain't got nothing. That's A ain't true. got nothing to do with B. So what? What does that but have when to do it, with anything? If it impacts that second house, that's when it's going to become a problem. Yeah, but what, it, what about where, what about what the saying. fact that he's spending? Maybe he's spending extra money on his kid. If it's know, spending money on a kid, that's one thing. That's going to be accepted. But you don't but think when the car, you know, benefits the kid? Okay, that's what I'm saying. Is he drop trying to say? Is he driving the car? Again, I don't have a problem with that being the case. But the problem is. She's not going to be willing to accept it because she's not getting the benefit of it. The child's not getting the, the direct benefit of it. How is the child not getting a direct That's benefit a, if the mother is walking, the child is walking or I, riding the bus? Okay. How is this, how is the child? It's all about the child. You keep bringing it back to the women and you know because, this household and that I, household. No, it's all about the child. The child is at the center of everything. They did not ask to be there. Right. Those people and he was married to this woman before. It's not like he okay. just had this one night stand with this girl and had a baby with her. This is his ex wife. Okay. You know, so you know clearly they've been apart for a while and it seems like they have a decent relationship. And you keep outside making of the child, like, there's no obligation to do anything extra but for that her. child is five years old. Okay. Five years old, not able to take care of himself. He can't get a job and work to help his mother. If this man is any sort of man and will take care of his child, he realizes that, okay, this woman has my son. Don't if she's living on, in the hood, that means my baby living in the don't, hood. Don't, if she don't ain't eating, that it. means my baby's not eating. Don't put it as a question of whether he's a man or not, because that's not fair. A it woman, absolutely is. No, it's not, because if the roles were reversed, would you, want me, would you pay for my car note? Would you be like, buy me a if car? If it meant that my child would be in a better position, absolutely. Okay, we then, all sit down and then, we make arrangements on, Then why don't you already have custody of them? Maybe that's not necessary. Because, but you just said if it's going to put him in a better situation. And if your situation is in such a better condition where you can afford a car note for somebody else. But that doesn't mean he necessarily has. I mean, as a mother, of course, you know, there's the stigma that a child should be with their mother. Yeah, that's, that's a stigma. That's kind of that's yeah, that's what, you know, traditionally is accepted, acceptable. But if the child is living with you and I, again, am able to help to provide a better life for my child, and that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm supposed to do. And it's your do. significant other, boyfriend, whatever, is going to be okay. If he don't that. like it, he can get, keep it moving. Hit okay, the streets. but you're supposed to be getting married. That decision, uh, my, that's the decision, child, that, know, decision that you're making is supposed to be of equal yoke. But my child, I don't care if it... It's your child. Okay, and Men what happened? What about go. When you, Women come and go. But he is supposed your to be your significant your other child. getting ready to get married. He can be significant, but if he doesn't realize the significance of my child and my relationship with my child, then again, he can hit the streets. So, what about when you two have a child? 
then that our child, we will both have full responsibility for that child as well. But my other child wouldn't, or his other child wouldn't take any, you know, they don't become secondary to our child. Your child is important, doesn't matter who they're with, who you have them with, how long you had them, they're your child. And let me say this too, this could be something that could happen again, just because she's the fiance and I don't want to wish any bad luck on their relationship. But what if they became exes? and they had kids together, I think she would have a different perspective of things and realize my kid needs to be taken care of. I don't have the money for this car. I need to call him up. It, it could very well happen to her. The biggest problem that you guys are not trying to pick up on is this. Why is he coming to her? Why is she coming to him for a car? Because she needs it. Okay, but hold on, hold on. She's got family. They have no dutiful obligation to each other outside of the child. Their child. Outside and that's of the, the child. child. And exactly. from a child support statement, from a child support statement, how much is he supposed to pay for child support? It depends on okay. their income. So okay. she could, it depends she could on the be trying. But she could, okay. But she's so, wanting him so, to get so her So you think car. she should go the, the, the alternate route and try to bust him up with child support just because she can? No, she if needs to go and get a job and she to needs me, to get an income that can support that. She can't. But how do, she cannot but how do go you know to him. She's not, you never he's know got, what happened. Okay, he's already developing another household. He, he can, don't He's going to be limited. Coming to me, asking me for to pay your car note or get you a car? Well, this is that's crazy. Thing hundred dollar cheap car that he would just pay for and that's it no notes he would just pay then how does he write that off as his as his child support does he get to avoid those months of child support okay so you equating your child to just being a child support. no Absolutely. i'm asking i'm asking Absolutely. a question does that fifteen hundred dollars count towards his that's not what i'm asking transportation your son can get your son has transportation and other means my question is does that count towards the child support i think that's a fair question uh, because that's what I, I, it's I, coming back to. I do, I do think that that's a fair question. I mean, but child support may only pay for groceries. And I, I was gonna no, say, could no. you can, you I've can. seen checks; they're like seventeen bucks. Absolutely, oh, that's because absolutely. of the per, that's because of the or other part of well, income. Well, let's let's not be let's let's not go there because if we're talking about the guy who's paying seventeen dollars, we're not talking about the guy who could potentially help his his ex buy a car. So we're not talking about the same guy here. But I think it's a fair question, and, and, and I'll give my opinion after you guys, but I think it's a fair question to ask, is it okay if we attach him helping her with the car as part of child support? Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if he helps her get a car, that's one thing. But the, the thing that people have to understand, and I can say this because I'm a single parent and I've gone through this whole child support thing, is when they sit down, it's very mathematical, the way that they figure out child support. So you can say, oh, yes, I've been paying this, I've been paying that. But they calculate it based on the incomes of the two parents. So, yes, I mean, she could say, yeah, he bought me this car for $1,500, but that doesn't alleviate him from all responsibility for, until the child is 18. You don't just, that's not a, like a, a get out of jail free card. But I guess what they're saying is, would that fifteen hundred dollars be deducted from all the child support checks in some kind of way? It could possibly, but again, that that's up to the Division of Child Support Enforcement. Right. That's no, true. Why, then why ask me for the car? Why why why, why 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 come to me for the car again? I I initially said as long as it doesn't impact both households, it's okay. Well, let me but eventually, you, let me, that let, type of money let me, let me is going to impact this. it. Let me ask you this, Carlton. If um. Let's 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 say she does not ask you for the money, right? Mm -hmm. And she also does not have the means because we're gonna be we're gonna be realistic here. We can't assume she has the means. So let's say she does not come to you. You you the baby daddy here. She's the baby mom, and she does not come to you. And then you find out that your child is not making it to school, or you find out that your child is not making it to church, or you find out that your child is not getting to do the things that they were accustomed to do because the, um, you know, the, the money is not there. She don't have no car. Then what do you say? Then I'm going to wonder, what is she doing to get herself a car? What can she do to get the car? But what has she the, been doing? What was she doing before that? The way I set it up for you is that she ain't got no car. She had a car and it broke down. Now okay. She, now she ain't got no car. Did she try to get it fixed? I mean, who did she go to first? She to go to the baby father before you go to some other source that you don't. Have, they are legally divorced, right? Once you get legally divorced, you really limit your contact to basically the kids. 
I, I understand right? where you're going, but I think okay. I think then, I, I think I think you're being insensitive. I can, you know me, I am insensitive. Yeah, my, my personal opinion is you're being insensitive because the way I'm asking you the question is assuming that you've been through all of those options. So forget about them questions that you want to ask. Did she go through this person? All that has been exhausted. The she, last resort is you. She the got last, alimony, right? Well, I mean, again, the last resort is you. You're saying that you have issues with helping her. I said, as long as it doesn't impact the second household, well, I don't I mean, have a problem I, with I, it. I agree with you on that, but we're also saying that we're assuming that that money is there. You can help. And I will help as long as it doesn't impact the second okay, household. Right, well, and again, where she keeps coming back, it's going to impact the second household. And the people are saying that I'm supposed to be obligated because of the child. I'm obligated because of the child to a certain extent. Okay. Well, I, I guess that's where we'll have to fundamentally agree to disagree because, you know, especially if we're dealing with a reasonable child's mother, if we're dealing with a reasonable person, then, you know, there's a saying. And as a married guy, you know this saying, a happy wife makes a happy life. Let's go ahead and apply that phrase to the baby mama. A happy baby mama makes a happy life. And we know how difficult some of them can be. Just like we know that some of the brothers ain't shit. And I said it and I'll put money in the tip jar. Because real talk, we know how that we know how this goes. We're not talking about them situations. We talking about the situation where she's reasonable, he's able. What's the problem? Yep. I, I don't see where the problem is. We're gonna take a break. Uh when we come back, we're gonna finish up the Diva Diaries. We got Carlton Banks, we got Miss Tony, we got the Dating Pool Diva. We're going to do a little bit more Diva Diary. Stay with me, y'all. It's my birthday. Call me up. Give me some salutations. 804-402-2893. We see you on Mixed Law. We see you on Facebook. We see you uh, on Loud City. We see you on Shoutcast. We appreciate the love we getting. The flagship show, Legacy Internet Radio. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. With your host, Marcus J. It's my birthday, 39, y'all. I'm excited. We appreciate the love we getting. Stay with me. We're taking a quick break. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 